Hi everyone. Uh, in this video, we are going to discuss about uh, the integral form of gradient of a scalar. So integral form of gradient of a scalar. If you have watched my other videos or previous videos, there we discussed about the grad phi or the gradient or the del operator when it is operated on a scalar phi, what it gives. So del phi from this, we, we actually got this is a vector quantity and is represented mathematically as del phi by del x plus j cap del phi by del y plus k cap del phi by del z. So this is what we got mathematically. Then to explain the physical significance of this, we uh, discussed, we showed that d phi gives you actually del phi okay which is the vector represented by this and then dot dr right dr is the difference differential uh, position vector okay i cap dx plus j cap dy plus k cap dz so this is what we got d phi is equal to del phi dot dr so if there is a change in the space coordinate here given by i cap dx j cap dy and k cap dz then the scalar function here will also change d phi, right? So this is uh, how we, you know, uh, uh, try to understand the physical significance of this del phi or the gradient of a phi, right? Then we said, you know, this d phi will be maximum if you are moving in a direction that is perpendicular to the surface or perpendicular to the phi, the function phi, right? So this is how we uh, discussed. But now if you want to write it in the integral form, how you will write it, okay, in, a integ in an integral form. So what we said actually, you know, see, suppose in the, you know, in any, you know, x, y, z, this is your, like, you know, you take x, y, z, your Cartesian coordinate space coordinates, right? Now you have some value over here, for example, okay, or else we can just think of in two dimension, whatever, one point over here, okay, where the potential value is phi one represented by x1, y1, and um, z1, right? x1, y1, z1. Then when you move from this particular point to another point somewhere here, okay, the scalar function changed. So now if you said this is, what this is, uh, you you can write like by, by what amount it actually changed, right? So we will say, suppose this is x2, y2, z2, or you can write in terms of the change, infinitesimal change in the x, y, and z. So I can say, suppose this is x1 plus dx, okay, that is the change. Then similarly in y, you got suppose y1 plus dy, and then z1 uh, plus dz. You can also think of like phi2 is actually x2, y2, z2. So that change is actually, you know, from x2 to x1 is dx and y2 to y1 is dy and z2 to z1 is dz, right? So uh, when, you know, at different positions, because we said, uh, uh, you know, uh, any physical quantity can be a, like, you know, can be a function of space and time. So here we are just observing the space coordinate. So what is the change, right? So that can be determined here. When we said phi is actually what? A function of x, y, z, space coordinates, right? So phi is function of uh, space coordinates. So when you are moving from phi one to phi two, suppose there is a change in d phi, the scalar function. So this d phi will definitely be a function of x, y, z. And how, I mean, actually how these uh, coordinates, space coordinates varied, right? So this is uh, the point, right? So any, you know, that function of x, y, z gives you actually what a uh, surface, right? A particular, uh, you know, here you can see like, you know, if it is a function of x, y, z, it actually represents a uh, surface, right? So now if you will consider any point like in, in the space uh, coordinate, any point you consider, right? Then you consider a surface over here, any, any surface, right? Okay, a surface over here, like, you know, uh, infinitesimally small surface, right? You consider such a small surface like this, right? Where dimensionally it is given by dx, dy, and dz, right? Now this particular surface here, which is like, you know, with dimension dx, dy, dz, they are infinitesimally small, right? So over this, you know, surface area, what is the change 
okay we need to find out what is the change okay um, of that function phi right so what i will do you know you see if this surface is a closed one closed surface right i can we can write it as okay how the phi changes over this surface okay can be given as phi ds there is a vector symbol over here why vector symbol symbol because if you are you know considering surface you know you are considering a surface so for example i will say this is a surface right okay not only i mean this surface will have only you know like x y or y z or z x it can have all the functions like x y z and all right so now you need to see uh, what actually you are considering like you know in the surface in what way you are moving so outward normal gives you the direction of the surface always you know that right if you are referring to the upper part of the surface here the above part then the perpendicular vector to the to that particular area okay elemental area here okay will give you the direction similarly if you are you know talking about the inward inner uh, part of the surface then the normal perpendicular to that will actually give you the direction right so this is the direction of the area vector with the magnitude right that infinitesimal you know whatever surface you are considering right okay so phi is change over that surface for example i mean okay i can just do a better diagram over here for example this okay now suppose you moved from one surface to the other or one phi value to the other phi value right for example let me just tell you you moved from here from this plane okay from this plane to this plane okay so what are the change here you can see this plane remains the same value suppose i will say this is xy plane then xy plane will remain only change is the dz right so when you move from one surface one phi value to another phi value right so how to determine that you know what is the change in phi that will be given by this phi ds right and if it is a closed surface okay it's a closed surface because closed surface will enclose a volume you can see that dx dy dz will enclose a volume so you can just put a um, what circular integration that clearly gives you that the surface is a closed one and when the surface here you can like like i showed you like a cube a uh, elemental cube then you can see that six surfaces six, six faces are bounded together to give you volume and what is that volume volume is given by dv is equal to dx dy and dz right okay so these surfaces six surfaces they are bounded they are bounded over here to give you some elemental volume right so if you want to find out what is the change of phi in that surface okay in that change in the you know um, i mean from phi 1 to phi 2 from one surface to the other okay then you, you need to take you know circular integration of this phi ds which will give you the change of phi over the surface then per unit volume per unit volume so i will write this as del v okay where this you know elemental volume here i am writing this as del v uh, where this uh, you know elemental volume means infinitesimally small volume so i can write del v tends to zero right so we can write this way so finally okay see this uh, del phi can also be written as del phi can also be written as limit del v tends to zero that is the volume that is enclosed by this closed surface okay closed surface so i will write you know the closed integration and then phi changes over that surface so ds okay um, here area is considered to be a vector quantity of course because i told you which area actually you are considering accordingly you can draw the outward normal right so phi ds divided by what del v that elemental volume so this is the way we can write um, we can represent the gradient of a scalar gradient of a scalar in integral form okay so in later videos we will see you know for different values of phi and different you know how we can just uh, you know calculate this del phi okay uh, or we will uh, talk more about the line integrals and surface line integral surface integral and volume integral so in the next video we will discuss same way like what do you mean by divergence so um, you know in terms of integral so here what we said 
so gradient of a scalar field phi is nothing but the limiting value okay of its surface integral limiting value of its surface integral per unit volume okay per unit volume over an enclosed volume over an enclosed volume we said if the surface is bounded then it will definitely what enclose a volume right uh, and the vol volume here is infinitesimally small so per unit volume but the volume is infinitesimally small uh, represented by this dx dy and dz where dx dy dz are infinitesimally small values along x y and z right so x y plane and y z plane and x z plane they are all you know bounded a cl closed surface okay uh, they formed a closed surface that's why they enclosed a volume and here while determining this grad phi okay what you are finding actually you are finding what uh, you are finding the you know um, the change of phi right in that particular surface which encloses a volume okay which encloses um, an elementary volume so this is how we can think of um, you know integral form of gradient of a scalar can also be written this way okay so if you want to write in the form of integration then you can write this way okay thank you for watching